Hello everyone, welcome back to the Silver Screen Dudes YouTube channel and we're doing something different today. I'm not alone and I'm not with AJ. I'm joined by Film Royalty. Who knew? I am joined today by Finn and Brooke, directors of uh, Sweet Caroline. And if you haven't heard of it, well, there's a review on the YouTube channel now. You definitely need to go get to see it. Spoiler, it's amazing. It's up, And I'm not just saying that because of present company. Gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining me. Thank you yeah, so we'll, much. We'll ask you afterwards what, what you really think of it. <laughs> <laughs> Eight out of ten. Or is it? You'll have to watch the <laughs> review. Um, guys, I've, I'm going to, I'm just going to fire straight in. If you don't mind, I've got my, my notes here. Um, when I finished watching this movie, I kind of, I was laughing the whole way through, by the way, but I kind of sat back in my chair and in the best possible way, I was like, what the F have I just watched? <laughs> and That's I wanted to know. Perfect response. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to know. How did you come up with this idea? Because I've never seen anything like it. What what was the story behind the story? Uh, well, one of the one of the when I was when I was starting on on sort of the, this story, obviously, I, I'd read an article about competitive big vegetable growers, and I was just fascinated. I saw these very like you know, serious looking people stood with their giant vegetables, you know, and I was thinking like, wow, that, that is, there's, there's something going on there. And I started researching and speaking to people in the scene. And, uh, I then, um, a mate's mum of mine was, was working for a friend of hers. who was a private detective <laughs> taking mm -hmm. notes at a court court case. And she was working for, she, she didn't realize that she was working for someone who was on the FBI most wanted list. <laughs> and she was oh, just God. like this very, reg very regular woman just going to the courthouse every day. And I thought that is bananas. And I just, and I love this. I know Finn's the same. It's like taking these big stories and putting them on little people, you know, normal people that we all know, like finding themselves in the middle of, of something big. And I just thought that this is a, just a great sort of marriage of those those kinds of, of stories. Um, a real and... a real reference for us was Burn After Reading, um, and you know that that nice. kind of scale of story, and 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 you look at Brad Pitt's character in that, you know, someone who is just every day thrown into this scenario situation, just so much far bigger, far reaching than his I... little world. I'd forgotten how much we talked about burn after reading at the beginning. Yeah, we really did. <laughs> burn after reading is a good one. Now, um, if I remember correctly from the poster, um, here we go. The office meets Ben Wheatley's sightseers. I'd kind of like to do one better on that because there was Ooh. this inescapable David Lynch vibe I got from this movie. Um, let me elaborate. I'm sure you've both seen Blue Velvet. The huge thing about Blue Velvet being just what goes on behind the white picket fence, perfect suburban Americana town. And I was like, so basically Finn and Brooke have done that, but just put it instead of being a sinister Dennis Hopper underground of Americana, you've done British back gardens and dogging. <laughs> Again, well, just... that, that's exactly <laughs> what the pitch was, because basically this, the whole film was born out of yeah i i was watching a lot of american mockumentaries and yeah. um you know i'm a huge fan of christopher guest uh i was loving all of the um american vandal series on netflix and i was just desperate to tell on a sort of film scale uh in a feature film format a mockumentary story that it was so truly british and that's mm -hmm. when i came to brooke and i was like look we've got to do this uh, there was one person for the job and it was Brooke. His writing is just his his ability to capture, as we were referencing, that whole idea of taking a story and planting it in quintessential British, sort of the British environment, but a world in which you can just find these characters that you connect with, know from your daily life, but also can totally laugh with. And so, yeah, we started developing it and that's when... Brooke had these ideas that he'd been sort of ruminating on and, and, and we sort of, yeah, completely jumped at it and started making it. 
that's, mean, that's, that's... Um, quite the com- quite the compliment. <laughs> I, lo- I, I mean, I love I love it when we when when you hear reviews like this comparing yourself comparing what you've made. You know, it's like it feels very silly at a lot of points. Some of the stuff that we're making, and then you hear these things and you think, "Oh my god!" Oh my you know god. what you've both and successfully you- done is you've made me incredibly self conscious about going in my garden here. Like literally an hour <laughs> before like our interview, I was just scrubbing away at my barbecue in the background, and I was like. I'm the brunt of their joke. (laughs) I'm literally (laughs) what they're describing. (laughs) Uh, But it's awesome. But uh, now, Finn, you especially were telling me that, and I'm sure, Brooke, you can address this too, but you were telling me before we started recording that you've done both the sort of very small uh, production of, you know, the run and gun style versus big Paramount-esque Hollywood productions. What's your creative process and how do you think it's evolved over time? I think, you know, first and foremost, from a creative perspective on this was approaching it with both of us directing, you know, co-directing is, it's a hard thing to do. Um, uh, And, you know, I think that those that do it really well, the the sort of duos as kind of brothers that kind of think the same and all of that. So, you know, it, it was a daunting creative process going into it. But, you know, as I've mentioned, you know, Brooke is someone who I really respect him and his comedy um, comedic language. And so, yeah, it was it was a really exciting challenge to go into it. Um, you know, it was really important for us, I think, to... Finn's go... all right, too. He's, he's all right as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was really important for us, regardless of scale, it was just so key to go through in prep and direct the film scene by scene together so that we could have those arguments, those creative heated discussions offset and weren't bringing those onto set and affecting that process, especially with actors. And so, yeah, I think it was for, for, for the first time for me where I really took that script through pre-production and just, yeah, got, got to direct it twice, if you see what I mean. Creative yeah. tension. It's creative tension. It's good. It's it's so valuable in everything. Is that creative tension? And it's like it's it's exactly you know it, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to sort of like basically argue out everything. Like why do we want to do this? Why are we wanting to do this? And it's and it's great. You know, it's a it's a very good experience. But I, but also as Finn says, it's not something that you want to be doing in front of the actors and the rest of the crew and everything. So you have to when you get to set, you have to really you know, both both be so aligned because otherwise you'd get you'd be like, well, wait, why are we doing this? Why are you saying that? What do you, you know? Like we haven't discussed this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's literally you're you're scripting the script essentially. So before even getting onto stage or onto set, you've agreed on everything that's going to happen that day together, so that there's none of that. Or does it get on as much as we can? Yeah, yeah, as much as we can. Interesting. Um, now. You, you, Finn, you were referencing uh, Brooks' creative comedic voice earlier. You obviously know this. A huge part of the mockumentary style, whether it be in the British or US office or pick any other mockumentary, what we do in the shadows noted for this too. It's very, very much the camera is such an intrinsic part of bringing that comedy to life, making it purposefully amateur for lack of a better word you know you don't want those beautiful still panning and dolly shots you don't want all the big robotics and animatronics helping you out to get a perfectly smooth shot you want something that feels a bit stuttery and jittery how much thought and prep actually goes into getting the camera to work in a mockumentary the way it does because if anything in my mind it looks more difficult to get it to do that yeah, ju- just as much as it does with massive crane shots and dolly tracking shots. Um, you know, it, it, the, the preparation is exactly the same in terms of creating that visual language. Um, and um, yeah, we, 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 Brooke and I in development with then, with, in pre production with Joe, um, Joe Guy, our DOP, and Jack Thompson Roylance, our B camera operator, we created this Marrow Festo which was uh, what we kind of operated the camera department from. And, you know, it's, it's so important because the camera became one of the characters in the film. Yep. And 
how how the cast reacted with my, each my other. My favorite character. My favorite <laughs> character. <laughs> it's you know just as important how they react with each other as it is how they are interacting with that camera. Yeah, and it's everything from you know the sort of the, those purposefully quick zooms to to the degree that then what you're focusing on becomes out of focus. That becomes part of the comedic language, doesn't it? And I was like. Yeah. There was one Go moment, on. do you remember this, Finn, where the camera had to run, um, uh, the, 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 camera, the camera had to run inside at some point. And, and Joe was like, I, ju I will not be able to, like, change the settings quick enough here. Like, I just, I just, it, it will just, it will go dark here. And I remember me and Finn both going, yeah, yeah, but that's good that's fine like we don't care and he was like you don't care about ex exposure <laughs> i was like no 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 because <laughs> it was just that, that thing of like if it wants to feel real it, it, like look real it should be done real you know and it's like it should be the the cameraman racking racking his settings to try and like you know refine what he's what he's shooting and, and so there were a few moments like that where it's like the mistakes actually i think you know, add to that feeling of like, wait, am I watching a 100%. documentary here? You know, mm. yeah. And actually, 100%. listening to the Office podcast um, in preparation for this, they were talking about there was a sequence where they they couldn't decide whether or not logistically a camera should be somewhere, and so they actually they the camera guy ran from that floor down to the next floor to see if they could do it in time because it's so important that every single placement of a camera is oh. e e every, is I'll, I'll finish what he said every single placement of a camera is e <laughs> <laughs> that's what he was saying <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Finn's cut. Um, oh, we'll have to tell just you leave what. Him, leave him. Is he for you? Is he Finn, just if there? If you like can this? hear me, Finn, if you can hear me, what you need to do, mate, is you need to. Uh, I'm going to remove you from the stream. All you need to do is refresh your page and um, and just come back in, and I'll readmit you. I'll pause pause the recording for the time being. I'll so jump on that. out, refresh your page. Ref yeah, message him that just in case you can't hear it. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and finish. What? Just go go again for what you were saying, Finn. Sorry. Uh, God, I can't actually remember oh, what I was saying. Did, 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 uh, but I remember. think it was yeah, it was it's, it, about the you know the choice of camera placements, camera lenses, you know where we were placing the camera just to make it entirely um, sort of authentic and real in that documentary world. Yeah, and uh, look, so one of the things that you hear on all levels from filmmakers is how much real people they've met or know have influenced on some level characters in their movies. Who was your inspiration for Caroline and who is your inspiration for Willie? Because I need to meet them. Like <laughs> Willie, I want to, who was this man? <laughs> the Caroline was actually a, a, a woman that I very well, um, a, a, friend of my mother-in-law's who I was just like you know the, the starting point was very much like I think that there's quite a lot of male characters who are who are sort of given this this sort of role um, and I don't I don't find that there's many sort of like female like middle-aged comedy leads you know and and and, and actually like I, I think that these these people in, in my life that they these these female characters are so massively part of like the funny parts of of my life and so it was very much like um you know originally i was i was the the character was going to be named after this this woman who i was who i was writing it about and then <laughs> and then the um and then swede caroline as a title came to my head and i thought oh no i've got to call it that <laughs> <laughs> i've got to call it that <laughs> um but yeah they of course yeah very much based on on you know, people that you know, because because that's where it all comes from, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, so much of it, what we have sort of brought into the script is pulled from yeah experiences, people we've come across. And I, I grew up going to these horticultural um, competitions, and so you know, a, a lot of uh, what I 
yeah pulled from was that sort of experience of of seeing these growers and and yeah seeing this the, the seriousness of their competitive Amazing. growth so i think this movie is actually going to drive a lot of conversation about what it all means you just know that your mark commodes of the world they're all going to be pulling this apart what would you say the most important themes and commentaries are in Swede Caroline? Wow. <laughs> I know. Well, what does it all mean? I what came prepared, boys. <laughs> God, we didn't, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I think it's up the... to the audience, though, isn't it? You know, it's up to the audience. I think people will get different things from it. You know, I think fundamentally, like, it's a. Richard, who plays Paul, you know, was always describing it as like a non non rom com, and I think there is a nice like friendship in in at the sort of heart of it, um, and a, and a sort of quite unusual friendship, you know. It's it's not like you know it's 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 an unusual trio, but I think that it's a lovely a lovely friendship and actually a, a relationship that that I think a lot of people would recognise. Um, and I, I think, you know, the audience will get what what they will from it. But that's that, I think, is the beating heart of it. Yeah. Um, to to, to me, it's, it's companionship. It's a film about friendships and companionships and supporting your friends, no, no matter how quirky, weird and bonkers their missions in life are. And, you know, I often referenced with Brooke and, and the cast that I think that if um, you know, uh, Willie, Paul, and Caroline were to meet now, they'd never be friends. But their friendship and their backstories, you know, um, uh, they 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 met quite a while ago. They've been friends since kind of being young, and you know, you have those friendships where, as a lot of my mates, if I met them now, I would not be friends with them. But I love them dearly, <laughs> and like I'm <laughs> I'm in the trenches. Yeah, but your them. friends are. <laughs> <laughs> and so i think that it's a story of three odd <laughs> characters that are so lovable and it shows that yeah there's always that sort of lovable charm about about everyone yeah, nice. i like that i like that a lot well said um what was the most challenging part of this production and how did you overcome it Work working with him <laughs> 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 Go on then. How did you overcome it? <laughs> I haven't yet. <laughs> Almost finished. Just got to <laughs> just got to do this last little bit. Just um, got to get the press ball done. The hardest part, for sure, is making a film uh, and releasing a film with next to no money. And you know, so many people do it in this UK indie space. Um, and it's so exciting to see it when people do do it. Um, but it's bloody hard work. Um, and, um, you know, it's sentiment to our incredible cast and crew. Every single one of them. Yes, not every name is on the poster. Not every name gets spoken about on these press tours. But, you know, every single one of them pulled together to make this film possible on no money and um yeah it's hard it's hard work but it's because of those names that don't get spoken about that make it i like that it's actually really refreshing to hear directors praise the whole crew um it's something i wish everyone did more of so I... <laughs> no <laughs> I, you won't hear that from me <laughs> this is about two people and they're both on this screen <laughs> <laughs> Am I okay to put that up as a short? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, one clip from here. <laughs> there you go. There's your vertical viral clip. Um yeah. they so they do this a lot in GQ, guys. Um, and I wanted to try and do the same with you both. What are some of your favorite movies and maybe some movies that you think are less heard of that you think people absolutely have to watch? The standard at the moment is Willem Dafoe recently saying only Baba. But on the press tour of poor things. Um, what what is... a, a random film that I watched when I first wanted to get into film was um, Paul Kay's uh, It's All Gone Pete Tong. 
it's oh, it's great. Know, a, a, a film that not a lot of people have seen, but I absolutely love it. I think yeah. there's such range from him as well. Like uh, he shows total and utter distress, losing it. But then also there's some <laughs> hilarious comedic moments. Um, I think it's brilliant. That's a random one. Nice. I what one film that I've just watched like fairly recently in like the last couple of years, but it's like it's I watched that Jim and Andy um, documentary about about um, uh, Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman, Andy Kaufman. and the documentary's yeah. wicked. But I hadn't seen Man on the Moon, and I loved that film. Like I thought it was so good. Like there, there's something, Superb, isn't it? I think it's I. You know when certain stories just connect with you, and I was just like, I didn't really know anything about Andy Kaufman, and like it sent me into this rabbit hole of like, this person lived this life like this, where they were just like a perpetual prankster, you know, and it's like yeah. uh, that sort of fringe comedy thing, and trying to bring that to big screen. I, I, I loved it. I loved both the documentary and the and the film and the 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 research that I ended up doing off the back of it, you know? Um, so that would be my, my, maybe my reference. That's a goodie man on the moon and uh, Jim and Andy love that. Mm. And finally guys to finish off, can we get maybe a little insight into what your next project or projects might be both uh, as a solo or as a duo? I'm currently writing a script about a man who sells 3d printed dick shaped chapsticks which he calls Chaps Dicks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so look out for that one. <laughs> Finn. Wow. Uh, yeah, what I'm working on is far less uh, <laughs> knee slapping than that. Um, but um, yeah, Be Be Bellstone, my production company, we are looking to sort of move more into the releasing space. So, yeah, we're looking at a lot of different films at the moment, some exciting opportunities. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, also just embracing the the fact that we've been given as storytellers this platform. Um, and I really, it's something that I want to embrace moving forward is telling stories that leave the world feeling somewhat better. You know, really, really positive um, uh, stories that can yeah help people progress through things so that's what we're looking towards doing at the moment well to that so end sweet caroline what has definitely reckon, done that <laughs> you reckon you'll take on my dick shaped chapstick <laughs> idea then <laughs> <laughs> listen if that movie's not called uh rock out with your stick out i don't know what to tell you <laughs> <laughs> that's so good <laughs> yeah guys but it's I, I don't know how much we have to pay you for to license that now. I don't know what the rules are uh, with just that. Get, just give me another interview. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. That'll be more than enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> guys, thank you so, so much for joining us here today on the Silver Screen Dudes. Um, to everyone watching, no smoke, no, no mirrors. Genuinely, as you can see from the review that's up on the channel now that is linked below, this is... With respect, gentlemen, maybe the best comedy of the year that you probably may not have heard of. Rush out, find it, because it's if you're a fan of Ricky Gervais, The Office, Taika Waititi, What We Do in the Shadows, support this movie because it hits all of those sweet spots. So the anti-comedy brought to you by the anti-David Lynch's. Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. Legend. Thank you Thanks so a lot, much. Lo lovely to meet you.